Hey guys, I'm uh, doing that wolf, doing its feet, so I thought I'd share with you guys on how to do a, a foot, how I do a foot. So I got this shark hook with the barb filed off and I've just got a motorcycle strap hanging from the ceiling, so just a piece of parachute cord on it. And I do a, a lot of my skinning right here in my, the little work anyway. But anyway, I just stick that in there like that. A lot of people get intimidated by the uh, doing feet and stuff like that. And it, it's like anything, just you do enough of them, it's easy. So, but it's, it's kind of like pulling off a sock. Just keep downward pressure on it and uh, do a little knife work here and there. But, and pretty much all the feet are the same. Uh, the cats are a little bit different and the wolverine are a little bit different. For, for me, the wolverine with that extra toe, um, just the way their bone structure is, they're small and their joints are, I don't know, they're just a different, a different foot. But let me just zoom in. You don't need to see me. But, but yeah, once you've, uh, you learn how to do this, it's super simple and it goes really fast. I remember when we were aerial hunting and we had a bunch of wolves near one time and I was <laughs> skinning wolves as fast as I could and I had two of the pilots doing feet. And I think I skunned two wolves before they had the foot done. So I had to come over and give them a, a demonstration and I think they were just wanting me to do it. It's, I'm not, not sure, but I think that was the deal. But anyway. I enjoy it, especially the wolves because their feet are so big. It's kind of like doing grizzly bear. And if you got them hanging like we are right here, it's pretty simple. So, and you see how I just keep working my thumb in there. And there's that little line, and you just keep working that line. Pull them down, rotate to the back. But, but super simple. And like I said, these things are, they're big, so they're easy to work on, they're easy to see, they're not, I don't see very good anymore. And the, uh, when you're doing things like Martin and stuff like that, and Fox, they're kind of small. But so you get to that, and you'll see it widen out where that joint is, that last joint, and that's where the, the claw is. Just push that down, pull around the back, open it up. And it's just like taking off a sock. And then when you get to that point where it's exposed, just stick that knife in there. Whoop, it just pops out. Whoop, just like that. And so the outside toes are shorter than the, the middle ones, so you're one joint more on those other ones, so you get that, walk it down, keep, keep that pressure on it. And I do mine a little bit different than everybody else. I leave that pad on. A lot of people cut that pad off. Um, I, I guess I never asked a taxidermist if you needed them or not, but I like them just the way I, when I get them tanned, they look cool with that foot on there even if it's just a wall hanging people like it so when I get down to that last joint I stick my hand in there let me get that down a little lower and then I just work that off let me touch that knife up so you can see the knife I'm using I bought this from Alberette at the tannery well over 20 years ago. So I think I bought three of them. They were like $4 or something. And it, it's my most used knife. So, but anyway, I just stick my hand up in there and start working that down. If you cut your finger, you went too deep. See that right there? Lucky my finger wasn't there. Anyway, just keep your finger putting pressure on that pad.
But then you end up with that pad and uh, lure manufacturers or lure makers use that. I'm not a lure maker. I'd like to learn the craft one of these days, but so then I just kind of tough it, clean it up a little bit. It's kind of funny when I'm not doing a, a video, I can take one of these off and they're just beautiful. But get out of there. Anyway, so then we got one more knuckle to go down on these. Like I said, that downward pressure all the time. When you get to that point, you can just stick it right behind it. Pops right out. <clears throat> and you rotate that around. Just like that. So, so I leave that, that whole pad on there. And it looks good when it's mount, you know, when it's uh, when it's drying after you got it tanned and just hanging on the wall, it's a little pocket. But so anyway, that's how I do it. So she was, uh, let me get rid of this uh, my foot. So I take these, let's put that hook up out of the way. I take these and put them in a bucket of water. And then uh, I got some natives that buy them and they use them for I guess like Indian breastplates, uh, ceremonial stuff. But yeah, they're pretty cool, the bones. So I got a whole bucket of them. I just keep throwing them in there. So that's done. And uh, let me show you the skull. So she got kicked in the head by a moose, I guess. Um, I was a little nervous when I was skinning her and seeing all that blood there. I said, geez, did you shoot her in the head? And, and then, no, oh, it's all caved in. So, yeah, pretty neat. Nothing, uh, no damage on the, uh, on the hide. Let's see where it's... But yeah, you can see, uh, see right there, there's nothing. But look at that, so. But yeah, so she was just a gorgeous, gorgeous 90 pound female. But I'm gonna do the lips and the ears and then put her outside and cool down for a little bit. And, uh, and then uh, flush her tonight. I got a neighbor that's coming over, a new trapper. and He's having some problems flushing, so he's asking if I'd give him a hand. So I says, no problem. But I'd much rather flush my own than somebody else's first, so. But, all right, well, we'll talk with you guys later.